Good evening. We will now call to order the Chesterfield Township Planning Commission meeting on March 2nd, 2023. 21st, I mean, please, I'll call the roll. Mr. Miller is here. Mr. LaBelle? Here. Mr. Demink? Here. Mr. Leonard? Here. Mr. Renault? Here. Mr. Jaworski? Here. Uh, Mr. Klonowski? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Brokart? Here. All present, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Approval of the minutes of the March 7th, 2023 Planning Commission. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 7th, 2023. Support. We have a motion by Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the agenda. I will make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, public hearings tonight. We have one public hearing, uh, public hearing to amend Chapter 76 of the zoning map. This public hearing is to initiate amendments to the Chesterfield Township zoning map, including 17 parcels of land along 26 Mile Road from I-94 to County Line Road. I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I have uh, to make a motion tonight to excuse Mr. Klonowski from this public hearing as he has a conflict of interest. We have a motion by Mr. Miller. Support. Supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Palin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with this concept as it goes back to uh, the beginning of the master plan process when this, when this concept was born. Um, the, the idea here was to create a village scale development with a mixture of uses uh, to accommodate commercial businesses, professional offices, uh, technology uses, missing middle housing. Um, and then the, the master plan was adopted and you guys got to work on the, the draft pretty quickly of the zoning district, which was ultimately approved by the township board back in July of this year. And now we're at the point for the map amendment, uh, as you stated, um, for 17 parcels of land south side of 26 Mile Road from I-94 to County Line. Um, so now we're at the public hearing stage, which is uh, out of this will be a recommendation to the Township Board. I can answer any questions if anyone has any. Thank you. Uh, Township Commissioners have any questions? Mr. Klonowski or Mr. Jaworski? Mr. Klonowski? Yes, oh, yeah, state. right. Uh, Mr. Leonard? Mr. LaBelle? I'm good for now after the presentation. I'm good. Mr. Carr? No. Nope. Mr. Renault? Okay. Mr. Brokart? I'm okay. I'm Mr. good. Uh, anybody from the general public like to speak? Please sign in. State your name for the record. Can you push the button? Okay, gotcha. Uh, my name is Paul Painter. I'm with a company called Painter Design and Engineering. Um, we have a, a very special interest in this uh, zoning. I own property on that 26-mile uh, road. So does some other individuals on your platform. And... Uh, <clears throat> We built this uh, property. Well, first, let me go back to where I need to be. Uh, after tonight, we will be represented by Wolfson, Bolton, Koshik, Thomas Holett from Troy, and Jeffrey Rentschler, Rentschler from Mount Clemens. Tonight, they asked me to come and speak to you before 
uh, this will be the last time I'll be speaking to you, then if there's any more, they'll be speaking to you. Uh, <clears throat> but I want to say a couple things. <clears throat> we built on 26 Mile in around 1989. We were the only company out there. There was no electricity, no water, no sewer. Me and my wife invested hundreds of thousands of dollars by the property. We had Quinlan Associates to do the engineering, and a lot of you know Carrig to do the steel work. We had difficulties getting the permit. For a year, we dug the footings and they caved in. And uh, me being naive, I owned three factories in Detroit, I wanted to get out because, I'll say some things that's are harmful, but I was knifed and razor bladed in Detroit, so I decided to come out 26. We came out to 26, and I am not going to get into the legal issue, but there was an individual at the township that had a conflict of interest, and that individual prevented me from getting my permits. I'm not going any further than that, but he's got a very powerful name. He's no longer here. After confronting him and Anderson Eckstein, I believe that's their name, the city engineers, of what they were doing, they gave me my permits, so I go away. We built the shop, and we've been out there 30 years. I'm an inventor, an engineering person. We invented equipment to kill the virus on casino chips. We work with SpaceX. We're a very small company. We have stuff all over the world. And uh, high technology. We do our own computer programming, write computer programs. And we are a, a problem-solving company. Corvette had transmissions that were blowing up. They came to us. Uh, Chrysler had uh, rust problems that came to us, and I'll leave it at that. So we built the shop and been there for 30 years. <clears throat> I'm not a political person. I don't have my ear to the rail. I didn't know all this was going on. I talked to Mr. Palin. He said it was published. So <clears throat> I'm 72, soon be 73. I'm ready to retire, and we want to sell the property. I talked to Mr. Palin at least six or seven times the last year and a half. I said, Mr. Palin, I would like to sell the front to put dentist's office. You can't do that, you can't build in front. I said, well, I would like to build in the back. No, you can't divide. I said, okay. We had a trucking company come in and wanted to buy the facility. He said, we'll buy this, but I'm gonna come and meet with the city and see if I can put my trucks out here. He come back to me and says, no. So, <clears throat> Uh, trying to sell the property has been di very difficult. We have a company now that wants to buy the property. I've had two realtors, and all of them said, Paul, the best thing I can tell you is tear that property down because all it's valued now is the land. I said, you're kidding. I said, I got an industrial building. Well, no one's going to buy it. Now, what we're having trouble with with the realtor right now, everybody that looks at it sees this MX2 and wants to know when they'll get booted off the property. Uh, so I'm here tonight begging each one of you. I'm the only one in this building that has an interest in that because I have an existing building. Other people don't have buildings on this property. I do. I'm going to suffer. My wife's going to suffer. And we can't sell the property. So <clears throat> I'm coming to you. I've got pictures of, of property all over the town here where... They store out front. I've got, I'm not gonna show pictures. I was, but uh, I have friends on Gratiot that store tractors and machinery out front. They're doing that. I'm told you're not putting anything outside. I thought this hospital they're gonna build next would be good for us. And some of you were there that day when they had their groundbreaking ceremony and people parked in my parking lot. I didn't have a problem with it. One of my guys talked to a police officer and says, they're parking over here. And they came and told me, you don't want to say anything about the people parking here. Trust me. I said, okay. So that was my first experience of things getting bad for me when this started to change. So <clears throat> all I want to do is get it non-conforming for 30 years. That is not going to develop tomorrow. Uh, there's no sewer. That would have been all developed factories. If you go look and see what Kerrig is doing on Casco uh, Township, 
Okay. He's building buildings there. 26 would have had factories there if you would have put a sewer there. But no one's going to put a factory. There's no sewer. I hope uh, you listen to me. I don't want to get destroyed. But it's happening tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Hi, my name is Ken Kosminski. I live on 26 Mile, uh, probably one of the last residential houses there. I'm not really exactly sure what's going on. I came to the meeting tonight to find out more information. Um, and I'm not, I'm kind of confused on what's going on, if anybody could just explain it. And I also wanted to know, since the township acquired the sewer line from Lennox, and it ends at Meyer. are we gonna be tapping into that sewer line or not? Answer the questions at the end. Mr. Payne? No, okay, we'll answer it at we'll the answer end. At the, we'll go ahead with your whole statement, sir, and I'll, I'll answer the question. So I just wanted to know exactly what was happening because I, I haven't heard exactly what hap is happening. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we can finish if there's anybody else wants to speak before we have comments. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Yvette Wright and I'm with Keller Williams. I have a client that is selling a property on 26 Mile Road. Um, I've had various inquiries about the property and um, offers that were submitted that people, whether they put it in writing, this is so loud, whether they put it in writing or they, um, where I could interpret that this is what their motive was, was to go M1. And I'm gonna assume based on their conversations, uh, the cannabis facilities and whatnot, me personally, um, as a previous resident of the community, I have my own, you know, opinions of what I, you know, feel for or against. But in a business sense, I have to inquire on behalf of my clients if that's a potential to go M1. What's involved with that? Could we accept an offer in regards to that? Um, because the benefits financially for it. I, uh, various people I know that we could accept their offer, but with their inspections and whatnot, they'll walk if they don't get what they want anyways. But marketability wise, the potential for uh, revenue is there for taxes for the township, for you know whether it goes towards schools and roads and what have you, I don't know. I just know the income base is gonna bring taxes and potentially more money for my clients to sell. So basically, other than that, um, I'm a Christian, so I believe what I believe, and I don't, you know, certain things I don't care about, but at the end of the day, I just wanna know if I can sell it, if we can do M1, and what everybody feels, you know, would they approve, and what the process is in regards to that, like how long would it take, and realistically, is that something that you guys would consider? And that's basically it. Thank you. Well, Gary Gennard, like 52624 Laurel Oak Lane, Chesterfield. I, I was here from Jonathan. We had a discussion as to uh, this sector of the community. And just from a historical perspective, at one time I represented several of the property owners on 26 Mile Road, a lot of their property next to Mr. Painter's was zoned uh, M1, and then Myers was being built across the street in Lenox. So I represented several people and got their properties rezoned to a commercial district. And I'm aware of the fact that the piece that Ms. Wright has for sale, people have made inquiries about a M1 for cannabis because that's under your general discussion. But several years back, probably like in the time frame of 08 through 11, I represented several of the property owners. We negotiated a deal with Consumer Power 
to have a collective detention basin on one of those parcels, basically like uh, where Mr. Carrig owned the piece that's now Ascension, for have a central detention with an easement agreement across the consumer energy property to get to the Vanderveen drain for an outlet. But that agreement basically had a three to five year life expectancy. And if it wasn't built at that time frame, that that you know, was gonna lapse, which it did. And I represent Mr. Carrig, who owns the corner on the Ira Township side. And at Radiance Drive and Ira Township comes up the county line. It's there, everybody drives on it, but Sinclair County <laughs> never accepted it because there was supposed to be a bypass lane for people going towards New Baltimore southbound to turn to go around for left turns. The road right away basically wasn't wide enough and there was a big ditch so it was never done but it's there and so if you look at some of the St. Clair County official maps it's on it other ones it's not. So in the discussion with Jonathan that street was going to go across that's I'm just you know pointing out some practical things and years ago I was involved directly and indirectly with part of the Partridge Creek development. And in that development, that's kind of somewhat like similar to this, but there was a finite small group of people that owned the majority of that land and sold it off to a small group of developers so they could develop that Partridge Creek neighborhood the way it was. But here when you have 17 parcels and if they're all owned by separate individuals or entities, it might be more difficult to build this village type development. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing no one, I'll bring it back to. Anybody else want to speak? Uh, bring it back to the board for questions. Mr. Jaworski. No questions here. We've spent the last year and a half putting this together. Right. Five years. Mr. Leonard. I'm good. Thank you. Mr. LaBelle. I have no comments or questions this evening. I have no questions. Mr. Carr. Uh, I have no additional questions. Mr. Renault. I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Brokart. Mr. Domingue. I just got a couple. So Planning Commission has been working on this for years. It started on before when I came up here. I'm on the term from, um, <clears throat> from 2020 until 2024. Regards to the sewer line, we are not tied into Lennox's sewer, sir. There's, we just approved a couple meetings ago to allow someone on the Lennox side, and I believe it's the gas station. I might stand to be corrected. There's so much going on in the township. But we allowed the individual that owns the gas station to tie in to our sewer on our side. But we are not tied in to Lennox's sewer. There's water. There's water. Yeah, water, excuse me. Thank you, Jonathan. But we, we are not tied in to Lennox for anything else. So I can let you know that. There is discussion going on about bringing sewer up there. Uh, it's, it's ongoing with the board and through engineering. <laughs> Um, but uh, Ascension built their own sewer treatment plant up there, so that that's where they're, you know, that's how they're handling it. But uh, yeah, we're not we're not we're not tied into Lennox for anything, sir. Like I said, that's in the planning. It's it's been out on the board. It's with our engineering. You know, we're looking at what we're going to do. It's still in discussion at at the board meeting. Okay, right. hold, hold on. Excuse a me. We can't have a banter back and forth. We're not allowed by, by our rules. I mean, I wanted to answer your question when you said, you know, we're tied into Lennox, and I just wanted to explain we are not. There's discussion with the board from the full-time members. I'm the only elected person up here. The rest of these gentlemen are residents, just like the residents here, and they're appointed to the Planning Commission for their opinion. But uh, as of now, there, there's talk of taking the sewer up there. I mean, we'd have to bond it or something else. But yeah, it's still in major discussion with the board itself. It would have to be brought up uh, either a Hobart or Burden. There, there's a couple of possibilities. Am I correct on that, Jonathan? Yeah, that's correct. And with any planning issues, I will let my planning director uh, discuss those. Yeah, I wanted to address a couple of the questions the best that I could. Um, as far as you know, existing uses or 
current zonings, potential zonings, um, you know, any use that's currently in existence would lawfully be able to continue. Um, they would not be stopped. Um, that use could legally continue until it was um, vacated by the property owner. It's not affected by a sale of the property. Um, that could continue until it was, you know, uh, voluntarily vacated. Um, as far as, you know, any existing zoning currently prior to a rezoning, what could happen um, if something was approved and there was a vested right in the property prior to any zoning change, that could continue as well. I guess I'll have Mr. Seabee correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if there was a vested right in a, in a project prior to a change in zoning, um, that could continue. Um, so there's not any stopping of, you know, something that's lawfully in existence prior to this. Um, I, I, there, there, there was quite a few questions that kind of centralized around the same thing, so I, I hope I addressed that, and if anyone has any follow-up for me, I can answer it. Well, I just got, I have a quick question for so if it's currently zoned M1, like the first gentleman that was up here, he can sell his property as M1 still. Correct. As long as the, there's not a change in use, yeah, um, it, it could continue. continue. Correct. Got it. Okay. I just, yeah, I didn't know that. Thanks. Thank you. With that, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Our normal procedure is to wait two weeks. Um, before we render our decision. So our next meeting is March the 23rd. I will poll the commission to see if they want to vote tonight. Our next meeting is April. April 4th. April 4th. Oh, I'm sorry. April 4th. <laughs> April 4th at 7 p.m. Mr. Jaworski? Two weeks. Mr. Leonard? Two weeks. Mr. LaBelle? Two weeks. Two weeks for me. Mr. Carr? Two weeks. Mr. Renault? Yeah, two weeks. Mr. Brokart? Two weeks. Mr. DeBink? Be two weeks, but I'll be late getting to that meeting. I have a, uh, an award ceremony I have to attend to for my son's hall. I'll be at the meeting, but it's just going to be late when I'm getting there. Okay, thank you. So we'll make a decision on April 4th. Thank you. Uh, reviews? Where he did. Um, our next, our secretary. Mr. Rick Painter, if you have other, is it Painter? Is that correct, sir? Yeah, Mr. Painter, yeah. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to email Jonathan or myself or any of the other board members. I know Jonathan Dering, sir. Domingue. Are you? Um, yep, I'm one of the township trustees, so I'm listed on the website, sir. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Reviews. Our secretary Rick will do the items we can do in a timely manner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item A is rezoning number 361. The applicant is requested to remove um, his uh, request from our board. So make a motion to. I don't even make a motion. No. Nope. He's um, withdrawn. He's, he's withdrawn his, uh, his request. <coughs> Item B. We probably should just oh, say what a, it was. The call I of a restaurant. Because I was asked not to. <laughs> I didn't because I was asked not to. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you were? Item B is conditional rezoning number 363. Um, we, uh, we had a public hearing. At our last meeting, and this is uh, the evening. Tonight is the night when we, we vote on that. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to conditionally approve um, this item. The, uh, the entire area is planned as a, uh, as a blended density residential area. This is all part of my motion. With the blended density, they, um, the way that our, um, our Bylaws are written is that it, it allows from three and a half to seven acres in that area. Um, this is conforming with that with that um, that density level. As part of the conditional development, the applicant has um, written that 
a total of 103 units consisting of 75 two-bedroom units with one car garage and 28 three-bedroom units with two car garage. It also, it'll be in a townhouse type building. Um, it is consistent with our master plan as stated because our master plan does allow or as asking for a blended density residential area. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval. Support. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Miller. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item C is uh, sign review 2023-09. This propeller basin located at 48740 Jefferson Avenue. He's requesting a variance for a wall sign. Um, the applicant is here this evening, the owner of Propeller Basin, and he'd, um, he'd like to address the board. Please uh, push the button on the mic. That's on? Okay. I don't know if everyone has a copy of the letter that I sent in. Um, I don't really have much more to add to that if you've all read it. Um, I've never really been in this position before, so I don't have much more to say if uh, you've all read that letter. I just think the issue is the building is turned. It's not perpendicular to Jefferson or parallel to it. So when westbound traffic or southwestbound traffic comes in, they don't see the front of the building. I was told um, through the people at Phillips and when we sent it into the township that there's an eight to one ratio for width to height. So they're recommending that I put Merino below propeller basin. What that does, and it's not a huge difference, is when that traffic comes from this side, they're not able to see the tail end of the letter. Now I'm talking to um, some other members, I've been told that I could put it on, put another sign on the other side of the building. Uh, the issue there is cost for one. This sign costs $12,000. I'm making improvements to the building and the property as money comes in and I can afford it. So, um, well, there you go. Yeah, so the plan was to just put that side on the front of the building. And because of the pitched roof, there, I think that looks better than putting Marina below it. If you scroll up or up or down, maybe it's the other way, sorry. Keep going. There you go. It just seems an opposite proportion to the pitch of the roof, and I didn't think it looked as good. So um, that's why I'm here. Um, like I said, as monies become available, I continue to try to make improvements to the property as much as I can. We built a seawall, redid all the docks. We purchased what was formerly Kenny's Marina, which is adjacent to our property, tore down two derelict houses, and removed houseboats. So I'm in it for the long haul. I want to continue to try to make improvements. So this is one of the steps. So I'll answer any questions if anybody has any, but that's basically my, my issue. I just want that sign to be one, one straight line like others I've seen in the area. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, I did take a ride by a couple times today trying to, you know, trying to come up with the best scenario for this gentleman. Um, as drawing or as requested for this variance, his sign is 22 inches tall by 26 feet long. So if you just round things off, it's more than a 13 to 1 ratio. And in the past, we, we have not allowed that in the past. Um, a recommendation that I had made to the individual is, um, first of all, the, the sign comes in at uh, 49 square feet, I believe. And uh, he has 50 lineal feet on the front of his building. So his sign does meet the ordinance in that fashion. But again, the, um, the age one ratio is greatly exceeded. Um, a recommendation, in fact, the gentleman from Phillips Sign actually brought a rendering this evening of the, um, the stack sign, which is still under the 50 lineal feet, or the, the 50, allowable 50 square feet. <coughs> um, a recommendation that I made to the individual was is that maybe he can, um, you know, do something on the side of the building because it is difficult to see when you're heading towards Selfridge on Jefferson, you can't see the sign. If it's stacked or if it's, in my opinion, if it's stacked or it's linear, you're still not gonna be able to see the sign. Something else needs to be done there. Um, 
you are allowed 50 square feet of signage. So if you did decide to put something on the front of the building or something on the side of the building, you're allowed 50 square feet total. So you'd have to reduce the size of the sign in the front in order to get the square footage on the side of your building. Okay. I, I, I didn't mention that to you, you and I apologize for that in the pre-meeting. So if I did put one on the, the northeastern face, both of them would have to be shrunk to equal, to equal total of 50 you're square feet? Correct, you're allowed 50 square feet on the total okay. because you have 50 lineal feet of frontage on the, on the, on the street. Mr. Palin? So the way the ordinance reads is you get a total of three signs. Um, but you, it's based on your frontage. So if you have 50 feet of frontage, you, have, you can do up to three signs, but one of those signs has to act as a main sign, being that it's at, at minimum 50% of your total sign area. So all that to say, one of them has to be at least 25 feet. So if you're only doing two, that's either you could split it in half or you could do one larger and one smaller. If that makes sense, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions by the board? Mr. Jaworski? No, this is a toughie, I agree. It looks better at one line, saw, uh, one, the name all in one line, but it I like completely goes against our ordinance and we've denied other people in the past, so. Could you consider the fact that these buildings along this stretch, I mean, I said that in the letter, that it's easier said than done to adhere to these rules. And a lot of these buildings in this stretch were built before a lot of us were born, you know? So this building itself, I think, is 75 feet from the center of the road, uh, or 80. So I know there's another, um, for monument signs, they have to be 70 feet from the center of the road. That would put that sign almost at the corner of the building. So it's things like that where it's, I'm hoping for a little bit of leeway, considering the fact that we have seven acres. We've been there for a long time. I'm trying to do my best to improve the property. But I don't know, it seemed, uh, well, hey. the main idea, that the fact that the building's turned the way it is and the building is closer to the street than a lot of the newer buildings that um, fall under this ordinance, I guess. Have you considered a standalone sign? Along the road? That's the next, uh, well, if you read in that, I, I did tear down a standalone sign. It was a pole sign that was on that grass in the lower right side. I did that about five years ago with the intention of replacing it. But when I drew up, I had the old Telstar Motel sign mm -hmm. on Hall Road. When I brought that to Steve at Phillips, he said, yeah, I doesn't think it's going to be possible because of the size of it. And then I talked to Dave and he reiterated, he reiterated that, said it's too big, it's gonna to be too tall. Um, I thought it would look good because it was an iconic sign. But I understand that and accept it. But this was my next step. Um, I do want a monument sign in the future, something like the New Haven sign down the road. Um, I wanted to put that initially, uh, where you see that, the left side of that grass, 70 feet is about, So that was going to be my next step after I do this. Um, and then a digital sign so we could advertise what's going on at the marina, promotions and whatnot. So, like I said, as money allows, um, I do what I can. Okay, so, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Konowski? Yeah, it <clears throat> almost seems like the monument sign would be uh, more practical than the, the sign on the building. From my standpoint, it just I think he's got to be too far back, though, Jim, because how far has he got to be back from the roadway, Jonathan? He's got to be 10 feet from any property line, um, <coughs> and you know the right of way is obviously not showing on there. But you know that 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 sign showing on there now is either in the right of way or within that 10 feet. Not to mention, I mean, I'm pretty sure that access circulation area on site for you where that. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. I don't know. Is this the is this the previous sign what we see here? No, no, no. no that, that's, well, that's that's, that's, that's the sign that's on the building oh, now. Edison pole? But it's not lit up. It's small. It doesn't say the word marina on it. I've had a lot of people come by. They don't know what we do. They think we make propellers. Yeah. So that was the whole point. Yeah, of putting them it, it's tough. We we've looked at this before. I mean, we talked about it. You know, it's. I, I think in that case, for a freestanding sign, he would be in front of you asking for a variance as well. You got to be 10 feet from the property line, which. 
is going to put them into his circulation areas, really, without a variance. Um, and even, even with that, you know, I could probably pull up the aerial to find out where the right of way is, but it's going to be pretty close to where the edge of that grass is, if not even inside of that. So it, it's, it's tough to find a location for a, for a freestanding sign. Yeah, you know, we stepped off 70 feet, me and Steve. It was near the middle of that truck right there, which is about where the corner of the building is in distance from the road. So the truck there on the left that's facing like yeah. us. Okay. Yeah. That's about 70 feet, Michael. Yeah, the middle of that like where that windshield is. That's 70 feet. Hmm. So that was a plan. I mean, that's that would be my next step if I get this sign on the front of the sh front of the building, which I think would complete I mean, it would complete the look and make it look really nice. Far back though. Which is Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Leonard yeah, this, uh, this is a little bit of a, a tough one. You know, I see some hardships, but I also see uh, a fix to it by having front and side. Uh, also, the monument sign. I mean, there's options here. If there were no other options, maybe a variance for the front to be on one line might be okay, acceptable, but because there are some other options, it, it, it makes it tough. Um, one thing Every, I mean, everything stands on its own merits, but it, you know, you don't want to open a door where it just. Well, that's where I thought I happening. had maybe a little bit of a case is the fact that the building was turned, and the building is older than a lot of newer buildings. But there are options to get your visibility. You know, we sure, had sure. Uh, this happen years mm -hmm. ago when I was on the zoning board. Same thing in that same area. There were some uh, okay. things that were going on and. It just you, you open up a can of worms, and it it, it it doesn't keep that continuity and follow the ordinances. So, yeah, I agree there are some difficulties there, but there are options to fix it without uh, going against the ordinance. So that's all I have. Thanks, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Carr. Yeah, I mean, I read all the documentation, and I did drive by it. I mean, I drive by it every day. I, I live there. So um, it, it is a difficult one because, you know, obviously we always have the challenges of setting precedences. So um, we have declined these in the past. I mean, although I can understand his predicament, um, being that it's an existing structure, but, you know, probably the first mistake he made was taking the sign down at the beginning you know, because you, you would probably have had a little more flexibility there by reusing uh, some component of it. But <clears throat> I really don't have a good solution. I, I've been trying to figure out a way to help them, but I haven't been able to come up with one yet. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking for you, <laughs> trying mm -hmm. to help. But uh, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a recommendation. I mean, the only thing I can think of is trying to do a sign that perpendicular comes off the front. But uh, yeah, that looks like an old pole barn type structure, isn't it? Yeah, on the other, yeah, next to CJ's, that's a pole barn. Yeah, that I mean, one right there is a brick building. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a good idea right now, but uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Mr. Renault? I, I have really no additional comments other than what the rest of the board's already put out. This is a, this is a tricky one. I can, I will conclude with that. Thank you, Mr. Brokart. Mr. Phillips, is it your contention that, no, no that's Mr. Martell. He's I'm the sorry, Mr. I'm Mr. Martell. He's from the sign company out there. I'm Mike. Excuse me. <laughs> is your contention that going all the way across is gonna be better visible when you're heading in the opposite direction towards Selfridge Field to see the name of your business? Is, is that what you think is gonna happen? That's part of it, but it's more of aesthetics. I think it just it just looks better with the shape of the building. I, I live in the area, and, mm -hmm. and that whole run needs to be refreshed. Yeah. And, and I like the look of your sign, the way you're proposing it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I would lean to, to, to make an exception because the building is situated in a manner which creates a real challenge for everybody. Right. I, I just don't know that it's going to be more visible going towards Selfridge Field than, than the stack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now, I, I would be tending to say, yeah, 
we would make the exception, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to think some more about that. Sure. A couple of things. Um, the building architecture, the way it's set, the orientation of the building, there's a lack of windows, so you really can't put a window sign on it. And there's minimal locations for a freestanding sign. Now, Mr. Martell, you've been around a long time, and I have too, but is the building, I know there were some additions put on by your dad. Mm -hmm. Was is the front part the original by was built by Mr. Zimmerman? Yeah, the front, the part that's uh, cedar. Yeah, that was the original structure, and if I recall correctly, the the roof was pitched a different way, and the sign was written on the front in paint for Port right. Basin Marina. Yeah, and, and then the little. and then the addition was later put on by the back by your mm -hmm. father, correct? Right. I just know it, guys, because I've lived there all my life. Um, and I know the marina owner and, and everything else. I mean, I know we've stuck to rules, but the orientation and, I mean, if you go down the street to where the PGA sign is, and they used to have a sun-up sign, mm -hmm. I mean, they're a pedestal, but look how far back it is. I mean, basically, once you go by C.J. Brown's bar, you barely see the PGA sign, because sun-up, if I recall right, doesn't even have a sign on there anymore, do they? No, they got yeah, a my, disagreement. Yeah, they had a... Uh, misunderstanding so yeah, he yeah, figured something was like that Gary took you know just from being around there but you know if, if it's worth it, it's a hard one it's a hard one to call I understand we got rules things like that but you know it's, it's a business and like I say the way it's set it's not like he's gonna tear down a building so you know if we can work something out somewhere somehow I think it'd be a possibility but it's up to the rest of the board members Mr. Chairman, I have another uh, okay. question this would be uh, for Jonathan um, trying to address the visibility from north and south would uh, and he's allowed 50 square feet would he be allowed a sign sitting on the front of that gable still <coughs> attached so that it's it's going from the building out to a point, five by five, 25 square feet on each side. Would that be allowed to put up a sign? Like projecting off the building? Yeah. Yes, but it's a certain limit. I'd have to look and see what it is. I don't know. Off that would the top give of my head. visibility from both sides. I agree with uh, Mr. LaBelle. I'm not sure by extending it on one line if that's really going to help him as much as he would think. If there was an option to, because we've done it with the billboards, you know, where they have a billboard that's A shape and it comes to a point, but you got that angle visibility from both ways. It's not a huge sign, so if the 25 square feet might give them another choice. It's just a thought. And he, you don't have to do the the 25. You don't have to do 25 feet per se, you don't have to do the 50 feet on the front. You know, you can do a main sign on the side of the building. There's nothing stating which facade you have to be on, but I mean, that's that's up to the applicant to decide what's what best suits them. I just wanted to throw that out that that was even a, an option to help out. So that's all I have, thanks. Would you like me to um, postpone making a decision this evening and give you an opportunity to spend more time with Philip sign to come up with a an alternate plan, or would you like me to make a, a motion sure. this evening? Sure, I can do that. Postpone it? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Maybe, sure, absolutely. We're, we're looking for ideas, and this is your expertise, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Steve Bretz. I'm with Phillips Sign, and I've uh, been working with Mike on this project for more than a few months. And I, just, I came tonight mainly just to lend support and respect to Mike because of uh, his, his businessman status and what he was trying to do with his property here. He's, he's trying to build it up, making it more aesthetically uh, uh, pleasing. He's very passionate about this. Um, we've been working together on this, like I say, for more than a few months. He's been into our shop a couple times. He's gone over his ideas of what he wants. Our artists have gone over ideas of what they think works best. Mike's had a lot of input into this sign, and uh, he's very passionate about it, very passionate about it. 
and I know that he wrote the letter to the to the board that expressed that that passion and um, just came tonight to support him on that. Um, we did many redraws on this. You know, Mike wanted what he wanted, and we, we gave him what he wanted, and we tried to stay within the, the ordinance, which <clears throat> size-wise we did, but, you know, the, the ratio of things another matter, obviously, with the, the way the building sets. But um, we did do a drawing of the, of the stacked version, and I think we did show it, we did show you that, and that one would be, from what I understand, would be approved if Mike was to go in that direction. He, he, that with obviously stack, is his second choice. With, with the stacked version, it wouldn't even be a variance at that point. You it wouldn't, wouldn't. It wouldn't even have to come in front of this board. That's, right. yeah, I just want to be sure of that, that that, right. that is the case. So I know Mike wants to be sure of that. But that's, that's his second choice. Obviously, that first choice is what he wants. But, I mean, you know, we can talk. We can postpone it if, if need be or, or whatever. But um, I just want to express the passionate of this man to uh, on his business and, and uh, support him in any way that I can. I think if you're coming down from Hall Road, that way you, you'll see it every time. But if you come from 23 Mile, you'll never see it, no matter what is on the front of that building. So I would definitely take that Mr. side. Mr. Chairman, can I jump in with one more thing? I don't think I've ever met a person uh, that doesn't have a cell phone. And every cell phone has maps, you know, uh, we have GPS. Uh, and we were talking in pre-planning that uh, we don't even look at buildings or signs or addresses anymore. We just listen to the phone tell us where to go and where to, when to turn. And uh, I think the, the benefit of having a nice-looking sign uh, is going to be there. I don't think it's gonna solve the problem of visibility. And I think most people looking for a place they don't know of, I mean, we all live around here, so we all know your business. But uh, it's just, it, it was just a, a comment I wanted to make that everybody uses phones, I think, now to go someplace if they're not familiar with a, a new area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the, um, are you going to make a motion or something, Rick? I'm going to. I'm trying to turn up so there's an echo here. Okay, because I want to say something. Oh, okay. okay go ahead. If he, we table it and he comes back, if he did two signs, would this board have any issue if he asked for a variance to go with a larger, give him some more square footage with two signs rather than just the one? You know, he's trying to get the exposure. You know, but that, that's up. You know, there's eight other members up here besides myself. Personally, I, I would consider it because there is a hardship that is, that is experiencing on Jefferson. I would consider something like that. So that, that's something to look at, Mr. Martell. I will tell you from being a lifelong resident and knowing this marina from where it was to what the Martell family has done after they bought it from the Zimmermans to his father and to him. It's totally cleaned it up. I mean, there. I mean, there's. There used to be a lot of, not taken care of. So at least for that, he's definitely made the township look better. You know, he keeps the boats back off the county right away. Where there's a couple more other marinas. You know, they got boats parked on Jefferson, and I've had some issues with the uh, road commission on that one. But, you know, at least for the business wise, like I say, from my my tenure in this township, and I've been living in that area for a long time, so. You know, maybe you might think of trying doing something a little on the front, maybe do inside, and if the board would consider some leeway, and giving mm -hmm. you some more square footage, okay, something on the front, and maybe something on the side. You know, I don't, I mean, just the way the building's set, because when you're coming up northbound from Home Drive, you got the houses there. Yep. And then when you're coming southbound, you got the pine trees over by CJ's. Yeah, that right. hurt. Right. Do I have it right? Yeah, the berm was in the drainage ditch. Yeah. So, so if we table it, there's some ideas, and it'd be up to the board if uh, they did allow you to go two signs, if they would allow you to uh, go with somewhat ex excess over. That would be a suggestion I might have. Okay, thanks. I'd like to make a quick comment. I think the intent of the ordinance is to keep the area clean, keep
keep the residents from having to deal with obtrusive signs and things that are that maybe obstruct views or or add a negative connotation to the area. I don't see either of these signs doing that. And I do see a hardship here. So I would be inclined to give him more square footage if that's what he wanted with two signs. That, that will address both directions on Jefferson there. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm also okay with your proposal as is, but I, I'd like you to come back and after thinking about a little bit more, present again. But I think the spirit of this ordinance is to keep it clean and fresh so that the whole area looks good. We don't want anything giant and obtrusive. And I don't think either of these do that. So I appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. LaBelle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the running request of the uh, applicant, I'd like to make a motion to postpone making a decision on this uh, variance. I'll give him up to uh, four meetings give him plenty of time, plenty of opportunity to uh, come up with a, another plan. Okay. Uh, so just so clear, the, the other the stacked version is approved, if I do go that way. Right. Stacked? Okay. I'm sorry? No. The stacked version is approved. The stacked version way. meets the township ordinance. You didn't even have to come in front of our board for that. Okay. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Leonard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, comments from the floor as permitted by the commission on non-agenda items. Mr. Gannon, Alex. Yes, over the last several months, you've had general discussion about uh, cannabis in the township. And I just want to give you a little handout exhibit that I've used in some litigation involving cannabis, because sometimes it's a serious question. Sometimes you have to take yourself In the, um, since I'm here, in the past I've represented Martells on their business there. One thing you have to keep in mind, I think in that area, the road right of way is 120 feet because Jefferson at one time was M29 until it got moved over to 23 Mile Road. So when the state had jurisdiction, I think it was like 120 feet and that's impacted some of the business as to their setback issues. Thank you. Uh, number nine is receive and file all comments regarding Agenda items, uh, 10 is committee reports, ordinance amendments, board liaison reports, review the discussions for members of the commission, consultants, and township employees, A, bylaws discussion, Jonathan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, we had passed this out and discussed it at the last meeting briefly. Uh, if anyone wanted to discuss tonight, had any comments, um, I think the biggest hang up, well, Number one, it's probably not a bad idea to review them every once in a while. Also, number two is, you know, the way our agenda is currently laid out when we moved over to this new agenda software. Uh, we, when we were building the agendas, we referenced the bylaws for the uh, way the, the agenda should look. Um, and there were some comments that m we might want to change that. So if you guys have comments, feel free to make it. If you guys want to shoot me comments in an email and then we can kind of put everything together and put a draft and bring a draft in front of you guys, however you want to do it. But I at least wanted to start the conversation. They are your rules after all, so you guys can change them if you'd like, so. I did uh, notice that the zoning board has a, a nicer agenda. You know, it was like the one we used to have, and they, they have the Pledge of Allegiance on there. If we could follow that one more, it might be a little bit easier to follow than some of those last three items. Yeah, so maybe we can look at how the agendas were being done previously and how take a look at the ZBA meetings and kind of put a draft together, bring it to you guys next time, and 
go from there. Okay. Just so you guys are aware, I will not be at the April 4th meeting. I'll be out of town. So, oh. so everyone knows. So, so I, what? Yeah, All of you guys are going to be gone? gone for oh, man. Oh, that's all we need. Anything else? Five. Yeah, we'll be here. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, the you done? Uh, <laughs> comments from commissioners, Mr. Jaworski. Mr. Klonowski, no, I'm good. Mr. Leonard, I'm good. Mr. LaBelle, I'm looking for volunteers for pre-planning for those who are going to be here. <laughs> You're going to be here? I thought you said you were going to be gone. <laughs> Mr. Leonard? <laughs> no, I know. I got a big job. So do I. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carr, anything for you? Mr. Rennell. I'm all set. Mr. Brokart. All set. Down there, Mr. Demink. So that April, f uh, next meeting, first one in April, April you're, you're not going to be here either, right? right. Jonathan's going to be absent. Um, I'm going to try to make it. My son's getting an award at from his uh, department, so I'm going to that. I will try to come here as soon as I can, but I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, Stephanie's going to be here. That's all. Pardon? Stephanie's going to be here. That's all that matters. And Julie. She'll be back too. Jim um, will be back. We've done a lot of work on cannabis. Um, I've heard some feedback. You know, reference our last meeting. I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, I've answered some questions from some of the people. They email me or call me. Um, you guys are doing a good job. Hopefully, we can uh, move this forward. Jonathan, what are we looking at for possible public hearing May? Yeah, right now it looks like May 2nd would be the first meeting um, where we could hit publishing dates. I'll give you guys a chance to look at the final draft and, and then set that public hearing. So then once we go to the public hearing, our next step will be if do we approve it? We can approve it at that time after the public hearing if we want. Is that my understanding or do we we're going to have another meeting? What would you suggest? It's your standard procedure. So um, your rule state you hold the public hearing and you vote at the next meeting after the public hearing is closed um, you okay. could waive those rules and then after that it's that's a ordinance amendment so it is a recommendation to the township board and then so after that's done it'll be in front of them okay so we do a public hearing uh, first part of may second meeting it comes back to us if we approve it sometime by the if we approve it at the second meeting and we get all the bugs and language correct uh, It'll come hopefully to the board sometime, maybe by the first meeting in June. I think that's a fair estimate. Okay. Like I say, we're working forward on it. I appreciate the work that all you gentlemen have worked on this. Uh, I think you guys have done a great job, and I appreciate everything you do. And I also have gotten some comments from other board members, uh, and they're glad to see we're moving forward and uh, trying to get this taken care of with this, with this voter initiative uh, was approved. So. My thanks to you and the thanks from uh, several of the board members <coughs> at the board I sit with. Again, thank you. And, uh, you know, I know there's some issues. Sometimes, like tonight, we had one. It's, it's a questionable one. Long-time business, you know. So I, and I understand we got rules. There, there's rules for everybody. So it's up to you. Like I say, there's eight of you and there's only one of me, but I respect your opinions and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if nothing else, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Support. Motion by Mr. Miller, support by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Hey, Brian, I'm going to tra trade jobs with you. What's that? I'm going to trade jobs with you. <laughs> no way. I have, I have, huh? You do great. No.